So welcome everybody, it's Penny yet again. And today, today, I am so honoured to be with the author of Transform Your Beliefs, Transform Your Life, Kate Marilyn. Well, I have just loved, as you know, always love talking to you. We've done many chats over the years and each time I see you, I'm just, oh, yes, Penny's energy. So good to see you and chat with you. So, Kate, okay, I would like uh, you to unfold your whole story. No, uh, get naked in front of everybody. No, of course not. I'm not that mean. Um, uh, and to trigger you. So uh, share with us how you got into EFT and Matrix. How did that come about? All right, here's, here's the headlines then. So um, about 14 years ago, I was living a different life. I worked for a brewery, drove a big BMW, smoked 20 a day, had, you know, had a history of traumas in, in the closet and was trying to write a book. And um, I think I'd been, yeah, I'd, had I been to Paris? Yeah, I'd been to Paris to write a book and I'd come back to England. I just couldn't do it. And I was like, oh, just want to actually write this has been my life dream to write but and then I went on a, a writing course it was a writing group with a difference it didn't say anything about EFT it's run by it was run by a lovely woman called Ros Barber uh who's an amazing novelist by the way and poet and she, we got in the room and she's right we're just going to talk about our emotions when it comes to writing and I was like what <laughs> like, you know what's going on like you know uh when's the fag break and then we started tapping and I went home that evening and I thought, I just, I just feel different, feel different, feel like something's changed in me. And I just found the thing that was wordy <laughs> and body and talking and it just all clicked. I could, I'd done a lot of counselling and stuff over the years, but nothing had really like moved it, you know, and really moved it. So I um hyper focused on tapping for a while and threw myself into it I think I trained in 2010 um and I think on the course with Carl I was out of the room most of the time dealing with you know all of my stuff and crying and all that thing and um but I remember it just it really did tra completely transform my life it was the best money I'd ever spent actually going on that course to teach myself these tools and connect with the tapping EFT MRA the community um so then as I say kind of threw myself into it loved it I'd left my job my job I was working as a copywriter I was changing all these beliefs about I, I'm a writer I can do it um I used it to quit smoking I had two home natural births um hay fever I mean, honestly, I just do it with everything and everyone. I was very tap happy those early days. Still am tap happy, but I'm probably a bit more discerning now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I was like working with clients and then I started giving talks about how to use tapping with writing. And then Carl and I, I gave one at his one of his supervision days. And then he rang me and we chatted and Hay House wanted another book. And I, you know, I've been wanting a book deal for how long? And all of a sudden, would you like, would you like one? Um, so I was really privileged, really lucky to work with trainers like yourself, Penny, all the, lots of the people that you've been interviewing, talking about all the different ways we can use matrix re-imprinting, all the different ways we can use EFT, all the amazing case studies and put them together with the updated versions around matrix screen printing in the book that you kindly showed um so yeah that's that's where kind of all the passion came in and i i'm all about community i'm all about like getting people in groups tapping in groups like um there's like free how to set up eft groups on my website and it's it's just when you get a room full of people tapping, you know this in your trainings, like energy is palpable. We're all kind of in this collective cauldron together, moving the energy. And I just, I love it. So we, uh, we've we had quite a lot of, uh, set up quite a lot of like community programs, like Matrix Collective Consciousness and the Tapathon, which was amazing in 2020, which we did for COVID. Um, been really lucky to work with amazing trainers, you know, on different courses. And there's so much there. So there's a couple of things I'd like mm -hmm. to go back to uh, because this has come up with a lot of my chats and I know okay. it was the same. 
Uh -huh. I, I did a couple of uh, EFT trainings before I met Cole. Mm. And then I went on calls and I was out of the room. And I think <laughs> when people hear that, they might go, mm, I'm, I'm not going to that training. Uh... I'm, what? what? Um, so how can we share with people that this, the bonus, it's like for me, mm. digging down into the deep dirt, because by that time, I was an NLP master, I was a Reiki master, but going on these trainings just brought more up for me that I mm. didn't even know that was there. Yeah. So when we're saying that we're going out of the rooms, it we're not re-traumatizing. No. <laughs> what it meant was I had people care for me yes. in a in a really different way. I I suddenly thought, I've got emotion coming up. This what I'm looking at, this slide or this piece of music. Oh, I feel some emotion. And we've been taught in the training, when you feel this emotion, don't run from it. Don't push it down. Don't eat something. Don't just lock it away. Or actually kind of look at it a little bit. And you don't have to go, ah, you can just go, are you okay? You know, and, te and the person next to you or a helper or Carl, you okay? Need a bit of help? And that might just be a hug. Like it might just be a hug or it might be someone going, do you want to come outside and have a chat? And that's what I mean about being out the room. It was someone saying, do you need some support? You, I can see you're emotional. And I think I had no clue that I was this hugely emotional, sensitive being. I mean, now that's laughable, really. <laughs> but at the time, I didn't know it. And, um, and that these emotions that were coming up, that I could be supported with that. I could support myself with that. Now support other people with that. And that's what really... Um, what I mean about being out the room was just yeah. someone looking after you I think it's not beautiful in that community that mm. we can feel supported and yeah. feel acknowledged and validated yeah completely and this I feel for you is one of your one of your gifts that you when you bring these communities together like the collective consciousness uh, matrix everyone always says they feel so held by you. well you know I yes thank you and also it's just practice as well you know I really think people say I really want to run EFT T groups there were times I ran webinars and EFT groups There's two people there first time I ran an EFT group I tapped for a long time before I stepped in that room and I gathered a lot of support around me to, to help me. And that's, you know, eight years ago, probably now, nine years ago. So it just, it's like anything, a muscle, isn't it? It gets easier and you learn about safety and you learn how to have helpers and you also learn it's not all on you and that you're helped, <laughs> you know, helpers in this realm and others. Like it's not just you holding this space. Everybody brings their intention everybody brings that good energy and what amazing energy we've got to work with in the tapping collective or the eft mra people come in with open hearts and they want change and they want to support each other like generally it's just been yeah amazing to be part of those communities yeah because even though you're a writer i hear that you were quite a corporate uh maybe a skeptical maybe <laughs> before you you met rose yeah, I think um, I was definitely, I've been in sales a long time and um, yeah, suited and booted and all of those things. And I think learning to um, sell anything is a gift really, because then once you know how to do that, you can sell amazing things, you know, and you can um, make it a real partnership for people and give them what they need. So yeah, I def I don't know whether I was a skeptic because... I just was dipping my toe into um, spirituality. I remember at university being given Louise Hay's book. I was going to yoga. My late husband was a Buddhist and he really introduced me to meditation. That would have only been maybe a year before I trained. Um, so, yeah, it was. Uh, when I found it, I didn't realize I was looking for it you know but when I found it I knew it's what I needed 
and mm. came to you. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that not only have you read, written this book, which please go out and buy this by Kate Mara, <laughs> um, Transform Your Beliefs, Transform Your And Carl Dawson. Carl Dawson, yeah. It's only the creator of Matrix. Who, who the creator. <laughs> um, that you've written other books as well. Yes, I have written other books. I have a novel, a first novel that I wrote in Paris in the bottom drawer that was taught me how to write a novel. I've written another one. Um, so I guess this ties in with the idea of like the EFT community and like giving so much to them, but they've given so much back to me because, um, you know, my husband passed away suddenly about three and a half years ago. So the EFT community held me, you know, trainers like yourself step forward, help me, Carl helped me, Janice helped me, you know, we step forward for each other in these times. I've been incredibly lucky, incredibly lucky to have support like that. And the writing of this last novel out this year, hopefully 2024, um, got me through, got me through a lot of that grief. It was my own process interestingly enough is a so my husband died of a sudden heart attack the book is I'd started writing before any of this um follows the story of a man who has a heart transplant from a woman and he imbibes all of the memories from the woman from her consciousness and goes on a journey with her consciousness so yeah I mean it was an incredible thing to write and I think there's more books coming there's some other ones and they're all kind of calling me at the moment but I'm I'm in a place where I'm just there's some foundations being built and some new ways going forward with with those yeah I mean thank you for sharing about um, your husband Dolly mm. and how Matrix um do you have any other stories that are perhaps not in the book that are personal or through clients or even from your collective consciousness that you would like to share? Mm. Well, mind <laughs> is having a firework display right now. Yeah, I think um, people generally come to me for one-to-one -one work for the big stuff, the deep stuff, the kind of stuff that they've really, they know it's there and they're ready to really look at it. So, um, you know, a lot of people come to me around uh, grief now. You know, they really want to work in the matrix to heal those parts of themselves that, you know, are struggling with loss and struggling with new identity. A lot of it is new identity. And I think when we work in the matrix, we're, we are really working on that timeline. So we're really going backwards for the past. We're really looking at, you know, those old beliefs. We're really looking at, forgiveness we're really looking at um sitting with hard stuff you know um yeah hard stuff and healing that on a very deep level and then coming to the present and doing self-regulation doing those daily habits so that we're creating new pathways in the brain and then going forward to the future and creating the future that we feel like yeah that's that's really what I want. So I think when you're joining, the, and you know this, Penny, when we're like in and out and weaving through the timelines, it becomes so beautiful. So if I think about, you know, um, someone had written a book, a uh, client of mine, and it was a really unusual book. And we were, we went back to like past hurts, rejections. Oh, it happened before. Can I really believe can I, this hurt so bad when it when I didn't that last book didn't get published or I didn't get the recognition how are they gonna how are they gonna even accept this book so we did work around healing the past looking at the echo talking to them making them feel more resourced and then we went into the present and all of the doubts like the tree of doubt and we did actually um go into the matrix and talk to the person who was going to be receiving the book like the publisher and 
not necessarily tapping on them, but like tapping on our re- her reaction, tapping with her on the reaction of that. And it, you know, like some of those sessions, you're like something really, really moved there. You know, it's like it was a real one. Uh, and then within a week, they had like a very high five figure advance for a book that we didn't that really is not mainstream at all so and there's there's been quite a lot of books actually for people when I think about it when I've worked with people um, I think this is the time for you to do that thing that you did oh yeah here's some more amazing books being written (laughs) yeah it is a joy to get people to like create connect to creativity I ran a lot of like tap and write sessions and the confident writer um but also the part of creativity of like getting it out there letting it go so you can move on there's more space for the next thing you know you can meet I meet people who are like I'm still working on something for like 10 12 years and you're like okay that we need to move some energy around this for this new new stuff to come in you know it needs to go and there needs to be a process for that whether it's published whether it's books that you know a bestseller or whatever it is um yeah so I think that um that's always one of my favorite ones really I love that and I think um talking about the law of attraction we look at it slightly I I love what you said because I'm all about making that space letting something go because if you already have a big car whether it's unused or it's broken down and it's in your garage how can you have another car in that garage you just can't (laughs) and some people can't yeah we don't even realize um that they haven't let go something that is smoldering in our unconscious Mm. metaphorically or realistically they can't let go of that yeah. and what I love about the work that uh, we do is with Matrix we're not just simply saying let go it's, that is to me a spiritual bypass oh yeah he says why don't you just let go of that I want to do another thing <laughs> um, and so you the way that you have weaved darling because Oh, you know, you've just co-created you and the universe, but you've taken the reins. And that's so inspirational. Well, sometimes you have to put the reins down for a while, don't you? You know, like you can ride it. I look back and I think, wow, I did all those programs and the tapathon and everything, and you're riding along. And then you have some big thing event, big life event happen. And the reins have to be put down for a while, you know, and other people are riding around you for a bit you know and or you're on their wagon (laughs) pulling you for a bit and then the reins might be a bit different next time you know like I think you know I I think I posed this question somewhere it's like are we ever really the same person after a big event after a big life event you know traumatic one and I don't think we are you know our brains change through trauma don't they and we have to shift and adjust to that we might not be the same person, but we will live a different way, you know, if we if we really lean into it and we can pick those reins up again. We can pick those reins up again. Yeah. yeah. I think it was Alice in Wonderland. I don't know if it was her or the Cheshire mm. that said this. I could be misquoting. I'm really good at it. That said, I can never go back to the person I was yesterday because I'm a different person today. Mm. But we're still i'm still penny but navigating a different penny Uh, different seasons of our lives different seasons and yeah it's a it's a joy ride for sure (laughs) you know (laughs) definitely what's one um well how would you sum up matrix in one sentence You get to creatively meet and play with all parts of yourself in all areas of time to create a life that you truly love. That's what I feel like 
get to meet all those parts of yourself that you know those little ones who needed a hug those ones that were on the shower floor crying those ones that were dancing under the moonlight you know you get to it's the same with writing Anissa Nin said you I write to live life twice and I think it can be like that with Matrix, you know, you are getting to experience your life again by looking back at the sum of who you are, of what you've lived through. And from to create something going forward, we do need to look back. We do need to say, what have I lived through? What am I still carrying? What is still heavy? Can I go back and meet that little one, that part of me who needs some love and care and attention and and show them what's ahead and show them that they're loved and that they're not alone. And yeah, it's just a real comfort. It's a real comfort that you can meet your future self. Yeah. I and think for me, somebody to that you're not just going to do this on your own. You've got that future self to walk by you. You know, I think I know it's longer than a big one sentence, sorry, but it's <laughs> it, it's there are times in the matrix where you might get a scene where you're bringing all those parts of you in. You know, I know you've had this where all of a sudden there's like 10, we call them the echoes, the parts of you. Then you might all be on the beach, past, present, future. And they're all maybe singing to you or they're all maybe dancing. And they're all like all of these parts in this, you know, they're all you and they've all got gifts for you and you've got gifts for them. And I just think, I mean, wow, what a, what a, what a way to live you know, through the seasons of your life that you can meet these parts of yourself. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I love Matrix Room. I think it's so much. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All the different ways that you can use it, you know, just meet, meeting yourself and resourcing yourself on a very, you know, straightforward, no frills kind of meet yourself, resource yourself for life. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you so much. And... If you wish to work with Kate, uh, the her email will be, or her website will be underneath. I don't know. I always do this. Some worked out where it's going to be. Well, it's katemarillat.com. But yeah, yeah you, can, yeah, always, you can always reach me at katemarillat at gmail.com. Um, lots of resources for practitioners. So yeah, reach out or you can look at the tappingcollective.com as well because we have a community over there. Thank you so much, Penny, for all that you do.